Montreal. So just walked across the water. Um, and then I kept going, uh, Lake Colden, Avalanche Lake. And so in that area, and I don't know if that's still valid, but five years ago, you needed a bear canister to camp there. And I only had my earth sack. So um, I knew I wanted to go to the um, campground close to kind of the Adirondack Lodge area. Mm -hmm. There's a campground there with a visitor center. And my plan was to just leave my food inside the visitor center. Uh, That way, even if I didn't have a bear canister, it didn't really matter. But it was getting pretty late. I was um, getting there. It was getting dark. I was really... uh, Because I had to get off trail, actually, to reach that area and I got there and it was dark and I was like oh my god what am I gonna do and luckily I started walking around the campground and I heard two French Canadian girls speaking and I approached them and I'm like hey hi in French of course and uh oh I'm hiking this trail do you think I could stay with you and they were right away they were like sure and they sent me some food and we talked a little bit but I I was really tired so I went to bed uh the next morning I left before they were awake so I don't think I bothered them too much Oh, but that was really nice of them. I don't remember their names, but thank you very much. <laughs> totally. So that whole day, uh, that took me to that campground. I covered 21 miles. And then a couple miles off trail uh, to get to that campground. So you stayed at the, so you, st- okay, so you stayed at near the lodge. So for, again, for everyone listening, uh, this is the area you're super familiar with. She walked past Avalanche Pass. Uh, Avalanche Lake, Lake Colden, the flowed lands, right in the the heart of the high peaks that you've all probably hiked hundreds of times. Uh, This is on map 11, and then we're also going to map 10. And um, yeah, we're on to map 10 now. And another uh, suggestion that Eric, the creator of the trail, the founder of the trail, if you will, he suggests due to the fact that you have to have a bear canister overnight camping in the eastern high peaks. Uh, he tends to recommend to plan your staying so that you are in and out of the eastern high peaks in one day. Then you don't have to worry about a bear can. Uh, that's just a, a tip that he gives in his guidebook. So just another another way to uh, and I had deal with read that. that, but I didn't manage it. Sure. Just another way to deal with it that Eric suggests in the, in the old guidebook. So at that point, too, um, it must have been pretty awesome for you, you know, from a visual standpoint. I mean, I don't know how the weather was. Well, the weather was great. You said it was it was no rain. So the, from a visual standpoint, once you got to the flowed lands and you were actually like walking along Lake Colden with, you know, big mountains on both sides of you and in front of you, it must have been a nice uh, mental pick me up because what you had experienced so far were walking between mountains, but now you're actually still walking between mountains, but you're actually getting really nice mountain views right next to you. That must have been awesome. It was also, I mean, it was also comforting because it was an area I knew, uh, well, not so well, apparently, because I did <laughs> miss a trail junction, but that I knew some. <laughs> sure. It was familiar. So it was comforting to be there. And of course, it's a beautiful area. For sure. So you, after you left your new Canadian friends, you left early, and uh, now we're on. What day are we on now? Day eight. All right, day eight. You are closing in here. So day eight, take me through it. So day eight, um, rejoined the trail. I had um, this was not a part of the official route there, of course. Um. Then I reached uh, Mount uh, Hovenberg area, which I had never visited, and you kind of enter it from the south. So you get to the top of the mountain, and you get to see the whole uh, Bubstead Run and um, everything, and you walk down there. And the view from up there was was really nice. Uh, it was a clear morning, so I really enjoyed that. Uh, so I walked out of that area, and then there's a bit of road walking on... Uh, road 73 and then another side road which takes you to the um, I forget the name of that Um, it's rabbit something trail Uh, it wasn't that long I'd say a mile a mile and a half sorry I'll pop here I'm looking for the name of the (laughs) 
Okay, so you walk on Road 73, then you make a right on Mountain Road, and it takes you to the Jackrabbit Trail Parking, and that's where another trail starts. So you follow, yeah, you follow that Jackrabbit Trail for a while, and then starts, um, eventually you have to get off trail, and that was probably one of the most difficult off trail sections for me. Uh, It's pretty long. I think it's three miles total. Um, And I was, I think it took me a total of maybe three or four hours to cover it. So very long. I was getting tired. I was ready to be out of the bush. Uh, But I kept my compass bearing. Sometimes there were some kind of marshy areas I had to go around. So I could not always keep the bearing. Uh, Eventually, though, there was a kind of, by the end, a kind of trail uh, that eventually took me to the road. Uh, and I remember getting, you get to road 86, um, sorry, you get to road 21, not 86. Uh, eventually you will walk towards road 86. And I remember there was a lady there actually at the the moment I came out of the bush and she was like, what are you doing? And I, I told her, and then she started lecturing me about the dangers of hiking solo. <laughs> and it was, yeah, I, I understood her point, but at that point I was just tired and I had just finished this bushwalk, so I wasn't really welcome uh, to have a speech. I think it came from a good intention, so it, it's fine. So by then you're uh, close to Lake Placid, so you there's a bit of road walk there, Road 21, um, 86, and then you uh, get to the White Face Mountain Trailhead, and you start. Uh, it's actually the trail that leads to White Face mm-hmm. at Connery um, Pond. And that evening, I camped on the. Yes, exactly. And I camped on the north shore um, of Lake Placid, and as I was getting there, it, it had been a twenty miles day, which is not that much but with that bushwalk I was really exhausted when I got there and I was really ready to set up my tent and go to bed and I got there and uh there was a couple in a boat kind of uh just parked there I guess and I I really wanted to, there's kind of a nice little campsite there and I wanted to use that campsite and um that that couple in the boat they were kind of busy if I can say mm. so I, I I started like I tried to be noisy so they would see me and maybe be more discreet, but they didn't see me at all. And I, I set up my whole really and eventually they saw me and left. It was a bit awkward, uh, but I didn't, didn't look at them. I mean, it, eventually they saw me and they just left with their boat. But sure. it was quite funny. And it, it was just for me, it was out of the question to pick a different campsite. I was just no, this is where I'm camping, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, tomorrow totally. I'll deal with what. That's really funny. All right, cool. So uh, you're about to head up Whiteface Mountain then. So we're on uh, map eight, if you're following along with the Trans ADK maps. So now this would, so you went from, you went from, was it from the Adirondack Lodge area to Whiteface in one day? Was that one day? Yes, I didn't make it to the top of Yeah, not to the top, but you made it to the base. Whiteface Landing. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a that's a big day. Yikes. Amazing. All right, so this is the end that was the end of which day now? Day This eight. is the end of day 8. Day 8, yes. Cool. Cool. All right. So you got a nice night's sleep eventually, I assume. Yes, I did. Um and then up to there, the route doesn't climb that much. I mean, it's it does go up and down, but nothing major. It's not like doing like all 46. Um, it follows the valleys mostly. But that day you climb uh, Whiteface and then you climb Catamount Mountain. So, of course, you start with Whiteface. Uh, I had actually never, I hadn't done that many 46 five years ago. So I had, I had never done it. So that was super nice. Uh, got to the top. Of course, there's always a bunch of people at the top of Whiteface, I believe. Definitely. Um, didn't get too many questions though i think it, there were enough people that people didn't see me coming and had no idea what i was doing uh hiked down the other side then there's a short road walk uh and then you take the trail that goes to, uh towards cooper kiln pound mm-hmm. i don't know if i'm pronouncing that correctly and there um at the time 
there was supposed to be another bushwalk section uh, to go from that trail to Forestdale Road. Road. And I was kind of dreading it a little bit. I was in my head, I was done with <laughs> off trail sections, but I'm like, okay, well, it's another one. I'll deal with it. But I got there, and as I was about to enter the forest, I see a trail that Eric had never mentioned on his website and on the guidebook. Because even though it's really important to have the uh, the guidebook, there's some uh, edits on Eric's website that you should add to your guidebook information uh, before leaving. Because, of course, since he wrote the guidebooks, things have changed. So there's some updates uh, on his website that it's very important to have and now that update is there but at the time it wasn't and it's a snowmobile trail and I was so happy to see that trail and I just the whole time I hiked on it I was almost singing I was just so happy not to have to be off trail and I wasn't sure where it was leading because that trail was not on my map but it led exactly where I needed to go amazing so it was a very nice surprise and then you get to Forestdale Road cross the road and start the climb on uh, Catamount Mountain uh, really fun little mountain to climb, lots of scrambling. Um, it was my first time climbing that one as well, so I enjoyed that. Beautiful weather once again because I was so lucky. Um, but then you have to go down the north side of that mountain, which is really difficult uh, at the start. Uh, Deanna is easier, but it's really dense for us at the, at the start. Uh, I remember I had so many scratches um, on my face and on my arms getting out of that off-trail section again. Uh, this was another really difficult section getting down Catamount Mountain. Mm -hmm. And I kept hearing the whole, as I was getting down, I kept hearing an animal being really noisy in the forest. So I, I was myself making sure I was noisy so I wouldn't uh, have an encounter where the animal did not see me and did not hear me. But I never saw anything. I just heard something moving um, about half the time I was going down. Eventually, as you go down, it clears up. It gets much easier. But the start is absolutely brutal. Hmm. So it's a so it's a bushwhack down the other side of Catamount, basically. Because, I mean, Catamount has a trail, yep. but you're not actually going on the trail during this, this portion. No, because you use the trail to climb up. Okay, got it. But to climb down, you're climbing down on the north side. Um, so, no, it's off completely off trail. And I went back there on that mountain a couple of years ago, and I showed my friend, well, this is where I started my bushwalk, mm -hmm, and sure. you could not believe it. It's very thick forest. Got it, got it. Fascinating. All right, cool. So you made it down eventually. I did. I got to Taylor Pond, and this was the last link to – on my route, so I decided to stay there. So that was one of my shorter days, 15 miles. But then there was Whiteface and Catamount in the way. Mm -hmm. uh, so still a good day. Sure, sure. So how'd that night go at Taylor Pond? Very good. I appreciated the lean to I knew it was the last one, uh, so I was a little sad. Um, this whole thing was also the end of my kind of sabbatical period. I was going back to work at that point in a week. So uh, it was one of my last nights in the wilderness, kind of. I enjoyed it. So that was the end of day eight, right? Or was that day nine? Exactly. Day uh, no, day nine. Sorry, day nine. Day nine. Yeah, yeah. So you, yeah. so you have one more night out here then, and you're done. Exactly. All right. Here we go. This is the final full day on the trail coming up here. So you stayed at Taylor Pond, at the Lean To at Taylor Pond. Take us through day ten. So the start of day ten, you go around Taylor Pond. There's trails, uh, relatively easy. There's a short bushwalk to get out of there, but very, very short. Um, so that was fine. You eventually end up on Silver Lake Road and then starts the road walk, which um, whenever you have feet problem, uh, road walks are really, really hard because it kind of puts, it's always the same pressure points. When you walk on a road, as when you walk on a trail, the pressure points on your feet will vary depending on, like, the trail. It's not always even. Sure. So that was tough. It was a tough last two days because at that point I had a lot of blisters on my feet. Um, so I found the road walk uh, pretty difficult. And, of course, I had great weather, which is nice, but also, like, walking on the road under the sun. It's not mm -hmm. always yeah. <laughs> the easiest. It has its own challenges. How long would you say that road walk was? 
people from there. The last two days I covered 52 miles. Um, 